and welcome to another episode of FUBA. In today's episode we are going to see how we can add an authorizer to our API gateway that is validating it with Auth0. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing and software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday and every Thursday and sometimes on Wednesdays. <laughs> So let's get started! So this is, I think, one of my most popular videos. I launched it in December 2016, so ages ago, and, and people still watch it, and, and, and it's old, and I would love to show you a better way to do this with um, better technologies and better practices than what we did in that video. That video is still valid, it's working, it's using a uh, serverless framework, I want to do it today with Sam. So what we are going to do is we are going to add an API gateway authorizers. If you don't know what is that, I have a whole series talking about them in these links that I leave you in the cards or in the description box. Uh, so I will not get into the details what a API uh, authorizer is, but we are going to use one of those and then we are hooking it up with Auth0. So then we will use the sign up and login mechanisms and sign out of Auth0 in our application. And then our users will get validations through some specific APIs using these authorizers that will get validated in Auth0. It sounds complicated, but it's not. So let's get to a little introduction of this and then to the code. So in this video I want to talk about Auth0. I already have created a video on Auth0 like three years ago or something like that, um, but I want to go back to it and show you the new way on hooking it up with your API gateways to secure your endpoints. If you don't know Auth0, it's a very similar service than Cognito. It provides authorization and authentication of your users, but it's not handled or managed by AWS, it's managed by a third party company. And basically what it does, it allows you to uh, log in with users, create user accounts, create a federator authentication against social media, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, whatever. And then you can have validations with JWT tokens that uh, you will get from your client application. So Auth0, if you check the web page, it will tell you more or less what it does. It's a very complete service. It allows you to have a user database. It will allow you to handle password lost and different types of authentication and all kind of things. And I will not go into the details because it's a very big uh, framework that I think is very recommended if you want to add it to your web page. It also creates this nice uh, login window for you to do whatever, like your login and your password, like Cognito does. So if you don't want to use Cognito because of reasons, then this is a great uh, solution. And when you um, get started with Auth0, you need to create an account and then you will go to your account and there you can create applications. I have some applications created. So when you go to your application, then you can start the integration. So I will go to one of my applications, my example uh, application. And here you will see the quick start in that application and then it's asking you what technology you want to. I will be using React, so I will choose that. And there you will start following the instructions on how to create your uh, client. So what we are going to do today? Basically, we already have done a similar thing when we did the uh, Cognito authorization with the Cognito user pools. Uh, but instead of Cognito, we are going to do Auth0. We are going to build a client. I will not show you much details on how I build a client because I did it following exactly the steps that are in the Auth0 page that I just show you on the quick start when you start with a new application. And if you are a web developer and you know better than me, you might not need to follow the steps. You can create your own application and just change the points and add those parts of the integration with the SDK. 
When we have the client application, then basically the user will need to log in to Auth0. So there you will need to do an SDK integration to Auth0. And then you will receive some valid uh, user credentials. Now the user wants to connect to an external API. That means that is your API gateway API. And for that, it will need to do a request, an HTTP request to that API gateway. That ATP request needs to have in the header, the authorization header, and basically that will hit the API gateway. And then the API gateway will call an authorizer. This authorizer will be a Lambda, a Lambda function that will get triggered. And then it will validate the JWT token that it comes in the header against Alt0. If everything is okay, then it will call the Lambda that is behind this authorizer and then return something to the user. We have seen this in previous videos, so I think this is the flow that we want. So we go back to the Auth0 page. And as I said, if you go to your application to quick start, then you can start seeing all the information on how to get started. You can see the uh, create a sample application. And then if you follow this step by step, you will get to the page that I have. There is no, no mystery. <laughs> However, for the backend, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, also build a uh, backend, but this backend will be a little bit different. So here we can search API Gateway. So if we go to Docs, then we can um, search for API Gateway. And then we look for the one that says secure AWS API gateways using custom authorizers. And here, make sure that you have the one with the custom authorizers and not with the delegation, because that's all. The custom authorizers is the one you, have, you want. And here you could follow all the steps, but we don't want that because these are not the steps we want to follow. We want to create, we know how to create our API gateway and our Lambda form infrastructure as code. We don't need to follow that steps. But then we need to go to step three. Step three is the one that we are interested in because it has the code from our custom authorizer. We are lazy, we don't want to make it up. So if we go to prepare the custom authorizer and check the link, download a sample custom authorizer, then there you can get to GitHub. And here you can see the code for the custom authorizer that we are going to use. In the lib.js is the code of the uh, token validation that I will copy paste basically. So now we know where I took my code from. I will sh take you to uh, Visual Studio and we can look at my code. This is what you are going to download from GitHub. Uh, it's a project with the client and the backend. The client, as I said, is what we have built following exactly the instructions from the um, out zero page, the quick start, the only thing in the external, when it tells uh, which URL to point, you just point to your API gateway. And that's kind of it. You could put it in an environmental variable or whatever you like. But that's the only thing I changed. Then the backend is a little bit different. And that's where I want to spend a little bit of time. So here I have a sum template. And in this sum template, I have, let's close everything. I have two functions and an API gateway. So we have the hello function that is the one that is kind of secure behind the authorizer. Then we have the API gateway that basically is uh, uh, used in the hello function and it has an authorizer. And then we have the Auth0 validator function that is our custom authorizer. We could have this in different stacks, it's no problem. So basically the hello function, let's close this. Uh, it's a function, very classical, with an API gateway that triggers it. The interesting thing is when we go to the API gateway, this we have seen in previous videos uh, where we define the course, and then we define because we are calling this from an uh, web page, so we need to have this in place. And then we have the authorizer here. Then we have the default authorizer that is basically this uh, authorizer that is here that is pointing to the function of zero validator function. So that's kind of it. Then we need to uh, add the default 
uh, authorizer to cross um, course preflight. So then we have basically the call, uh, the first call for the authorizer not to have a uh, course in place because everything gets fucked up. But that's, uh, we have discussed that in a previous video. And then our function, this is our authorizer, is a simple function, nothing strange. So let's go to our auth0 function that is inside this folder. And here you will see that we have the authorizer, that is the handler of the function, and the auth0 validator. This is exactly, um, the auth0 validator is the handler, and basically this is a basic handler that is just calling this authorizer and returning something. <laughs> Uh, so it's a very simple, this is exactly the code that we can find in the GitHub repo. As you see, this is a basic copy paste, but the documentation is there and it's quite good. So why to make it up? And then in the authorizer here, we can see the different parts. So we start here in the authenticate and then we get the token from the params. Then we decode the token. And then we, uh, it's creating a JWKS client with some uh, parameters that you need to put in a NEMP file. This is also explained in the documentation. So if you go to the documentation, it will tell you that you need to um, have an N file and you need to put these three things here. So when you go to the custom uh, code for your authorizer, the one that is in the GitHub, if you have this file in place, then everything will be working out of the box. And then we get the signing key and then we just verify the token basically. And we create the policy and we return it. There is no rocket science. If you have this piece of code ready in the GitHub, it does all the magic that it needs to do and it can validate your odd zero token in two seconds. So this is a very straightforward process. The odd zero documentation is very good. And if you don't want to <laughs> read it, you can just copy paste this Git, uh, just download this GitHub repo and you have everything you need. I'm pretty sure you will want to make another client because this one is just a demo, but it will work very well. We can try it out. Let me start this um, and we can see it in action. So if we open the application, it looks like this. It's very good user interface. I will make the button bigger so you can see it. Very good user interface. It has a login button. And this is calling the uh, Auth0 uh, kind of look and feel, this uh, hosted kind of login view. I have configured my application not to have username and password or anything, just to sign in with Facebook because I'm too lazy to create a user. So it shows me this button that I can sign in with Facebook. When you're creating your login, uh, your out application, you can define what you want. And then in this great user experience, I have the home button that is, takes me to where I am now. The profile that just gives me uh, my information from Facebook. So I will not show you more than this. Um, and then the external API that is the one uh, calling the uh, API gateway endpoint. So if I do ping API, it will just call the authorizer and then call the uh, Lambda if everything is fine. So I cannot call this endpoint basically if I'm not authorized or if I log out. You can find the code in GitHub, the link in this description box. That was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. All these thumbs ups really help and makes my videos more recommended around in YouTube. So please don't forget. And let me know what you would like to see in other videos, either about API gateway authorizers or other authentication methods or what, what kind of things you are interested to see. And I see you next week with another episode of Wubar. Ciao, ciao!